Good morning, everyone. How is it going? Rita always has my back. Shall we start?
I was enjoying that. I was enjoying that way too much. Way too much. Hey, welcome to church. It's great to have you here. It's great to have people who are onto it, like Maddie, who can wake us out of our daydreams as we're thinking about Christmas and Jesus and building announcements, which I was doing uh, on the front row. Hey, um, for those of you joining us on Facebook Live, it's great to have you with us. We have jam-packed the service this morning uh, at our 9.30. Uh, we've got a few seats left in this service, but if you're joining us uh, online at home, it's great to have you with us. But I really encourage you, next week's our last service for the year, and it's nothing like being in the room. So come and hang out with us and be ministered to by our team, and just come and sit under the Word. If you're already on holiday and joining us, it's awesome to have technology and to be able to join and even when you are on the road. Hey, uh, just a couple of things we need to know. Obviously, we are in COVID times. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, perhaps you've missed it, haven't seen any headlines about it, but we're in a little bit of an uncertain space at the moment. So just a couple of things. When you come in, obviously, we are not a vaccine pass required service, and we've chosen to be that uh, in that space in this season. Um, but we do need people to either scan in or sign in. Um, when you come in, just so that we can fulfill our legal obligations. Some of you uh, may prefer to wear a mask, and we encourage that. And if you are not comfortable doing that, then uh, that's totally your prerogative. Uh, if you have any, uh, as we move uh, both this week, next week, and into the start of the, the year, we are anticipating that COVID will be in the community uh, by early next year. It's just really important. The smartest thing we can do is not have arguments about where we all sit on the issue. But if we're actually sick, stay home. Uh, that's it. That's the best way we can love each other in this season is if we're sick, stay home. If you've got symptoms going on, whatever, just whether it's a cold, whether you think it's COVID or not, just stay home. Yeah. Um, we want to be generous, but not with bugs. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's do that. It's just a simple way we can keep each other safe and love each other in practical ways. Cool. We've got our kids out from the start of these services just so, so we can keep that 50, um, that bubble of 50 intact uh, for these services. So they're already out there. Um, uh, the other thing is, obviously, we're in a pretty rapidly changing or evolving situation um, with just um, both facilities and COVID. Um, and so we just really encourage you, if you're not getting our Connect Live emails, just to, on your way out today, check that into information. Uh, this can give them your email because uh, there will be some changes being announced for the new year around meeting places and times and all of that sort of stuff. And I'll explain that in a minute. But it's very hard for you to keep up with what's happening. Uh, if we can't get in touch with you. And obviously, there's still literally on our database around 300 people that call Connect to Maru home. So making those phone calls isn't that easy or that viable over the season. So, so um, we'll be messaging out through teams and things like that. But the best way you can help us is to give us your email and we can com communicate directly to you. Some people, hopefully, uh, like me, are taking a bit of a break from social media. It's pretty hot out there. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, we do a lot of our, our communications through Facebook. Um, uh, and but if you're not in that space, then email will be your lifeline. Okay, so and if you're not on our, if you're part of the church but not on our Facebook family group, uh, try and find us too and jump in there too because we're doing video updates, we're doing uh, notices as well. But if we can have your email, you'll be able to get all of the video content through links to our YouTube page, um, which is generally just one of us pastors doing an announcement or letting you know if there's a complex thing to talk through or think through at this time. Great. Um, welcome to anyone who's visiting with us this morning. Everyone looks relatively familiar, but I'm sure there's some people that could just make um, Jacob feel useful by wanting a chocolate this morning. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Linda and Rebecca. It's fantastic. Hey, one of the things that we love to do in this season is make sure that people that don't have the means, perhaps, um, to make uh, Christmas a special eating time. Don't we love to especially eat at Christmas? Uh, we want to make sure that they've got some supplies on us to make sure it's a, a special time. And it can be a time where financial restraints really are felt in, in families and homes. So we've been putting together our Christmas hampers as usual. And we're being a bit strategic about it this year. Rather than saying everyone bring uh, your best can of baked beans uh, for the food hampers, which we're very good at doing, we're being a bit more targeted with what we're trying to put in those. So this week is meat uh, or vouchers for meat. If you've got meat that's available to donate, that would be suitable for Christmas stuff, please let um, one of our team know, Jamie, Michelle, myself, or whatever, I had visions in the first service of people bringing their meat, putting it on the information. It's probably not helpful. 
um, maybe uh, just get in touch with us about that. The other option, of course, is that if, you would, if you've got money or you would like to do a voucher for one of the supermarkets or something so we can purchase the meat, that's every bit as helpful. In fact, sometimes more helpful because it means we can put the right size packages together for the kind of homes or families that we're delivering them to. It's great to be able to be a blessing at Christmas, eh? Yeah. So let's lean into that. Hey, good news, bad news. Actually, bad news, good news. We'll do it around that way. Uh, next Sunday brings to end a, uh, we think it's a six-year journey. It could be longer than that. At least a six-year journey here at Mountain View Auditorium. Just with the changes with COVID regulations and all of that, the schools, like many schools across the country, have decided that uh, any extra, uh, there'll be no non-school related activities happening in the premises. This isn't an issue of vaccine, non-vaccine. It's literally an issue of no school contact. Uh, anything that's not school business happening on their premises, which we completely understand. They are anticipating, like many organisations, that COVID will be in the community come first term next uh, next year. And we actually agree that's the sensible option. It's interesting for us, though, because it's been our Sunday home yeah. for uh, a number of uh, years now. We've been so grateful. And those of you who don't know the backstory, we contended in prayer to get this place because we we're in a road season and a smelly venue. Uh, whenever it would rain, it would flood, and we'd smell the, the smell of rotten carpet would fill the venue and fill our nostrils on a Sunday morning. I'm getting some nods from some people who were there, and it was like, if we could just get into a nice performing arts auditorium, we could have, enjoy the, um, the space, and we needed it for growth reasons. We got it. It's been great, but the season's come to an end. So now to the good news. The good news is, with the restrictions the government has put in place, and with our limited service numbers, it's all of a sudden become viable for us to do the first stage of development in our own building. Which means that we always intended that we would put a small chapel, around a 100-seat chapel, in the front of the factory of our new building, um, which would be just an auxiliary space for, for Sundays, off, which would service our either 250 to 350, the, the designs haven't been finalised for our main auditorium, uh, in that building. But guess what? If we build a 100-seat auditorium now, it becomes our main auditorium with uh, restrictions even at Green being 100 people. Yeah. Um, and so then we become masters of our own destiny. We become our own landlords for Sunday, and we get to decide, our trustees get to decide who and what meets in there. And so it just seems like it's the right option. And I have to say, uh, this was, we only found out about 10 days ago uh, about the lease. Um, but already just the right people have the right headspace at the right time. We assembled a team on Thursday night at the building full of project managers um, and um, building project specialists, essentially. And it seems like God is opening the doors for that to be pretty doable. We actually think probably with about a four-month time frame, we can build what we would have built as a first stage uh, in our own facility. So um, we will be coming in the new year saying, hey, look, if you've got some money, I know Christmas is an expensive time, but we would love to be able to get into our own facility. And we it's going to take some money to do that. We've already got some by the grace of God, and we're in a pretty um, positive position in terms of where the building's at and what we might need to do. It will be around about a hundred, well, maybe up to a $150,000 project, but we don't want to just put in a wall and deal with the uneven floors and you know, with some rugs, we actually want to build it like we would we would have it if we were doing the project properly. So um, the good news is we've probably got half that money already. Um, but we just want to put out an invitation, even see that idea now that we will be putting out an invitation for people to give into that. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could pay cash for that yeah. and not take on debt? Those of you who've been the building journey with us, um, we've got a building now that's probably worth one and a half million, and at the end of, of one starting next year, we'll have a mortgage of $420,000 on. Yeah. We've paid, uh, we will have paid almost $40,000 off the mortgage, plus been able to clear other associated debt through the, the shuffling of some assets. Um, God has been so faithful. God has been so good. We literally are still in miracle territory. We pinch ourselves every time we go in there. Um, but there's also some other just plans at, at foot, which um, we may or may not be able to do, but um, we may have to go somewhere in between and maybe um, call on one of our church connections in the city. We've got great relationships with other ministers about using their facilities in the meantime. But we do, we are hoping, um, and we are in conversations with the council about getting a concession based on the plans um, that we have to do this next stage, that we may be able to get a slight lift in our current building limits. We're only allowed 48 in our building. Um, at the moment, but we're going to try and get that pushed through to around 99. 
if we can get that consented, then it um, means that we could move straight into our facility for next year, uh, even before that's constructed. So um, pray for us. Pray for those who are navigating this, but it literally feels like at the right time, the right people are available. We've tried to pull planning and strategic teams together um, all this year to try and think about getting in. It really to my heart that next year would be the year that we would inhabit it. And it feels like we've had less time and less resource to do that with just the busyness of pastoral life over an uncertain season. Uh, less time to manage projects. But just at the right time, the right people with the right amount of headspace, um, it's a very exciting time. But that means that next week's our last weekend here. And maybe our next meeting will be in our own building. Otherwise, it will be in a temporary space while we get the work done. Is that okay? Yep. Um, but in the midst of uh, what many people would say, ah, oh, you know, Maybe the church is getting a hard time. It's because of the government restrictions that actually this will be possible. This is actually making way for us to move into um, our own building. So connect. I think next year we're going home. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty exciting. That's very exciting. And so just really encourage those of you, especially thinking about it now, praying about it now, what's something that you could do or your family could do to contribute? Yeah. It'd be amazing if we could move into that um, without debt, extra debt would be just amazing. In a financially uncertain time, we don't want to be taking, taking irresponsible steps, but we literally feel like God's already paved the way for the beginning of that process um, to happen. Yeah. Hey, but next week, our last service here, Christmas service. We're going to have kids in with us, no kids church next week, so make sure that you book yourself and your families in early. We're going to have two services at 50, and we are going to party the year out, and then we're going to have a break over summer, but we'll be in touch with you around the, what's going to happen and where we will meet on the 9th of January. Is that okay? Awesome. Cool. Hey, and on that note, our giving table is just over here. Um, those of you who partner with us weekly, we're just grateful, not just for your heart to serve God and love God with everything that you've got, your mind, your soul, and your strength, uh, which includes our finances, our thought life, everything that we do, we offer to God. And, um, so we thank you for your partnership. But on a practical note, that has such a flow on blessing to keep things going around here at Kenny. allows us to be generous in this season and hopefully it's going to allow us to walk into our own facility done um, to a standard that we can all be incredibly proud of and enjoy, but enjoy for many years to come. So that's just there. Whether you do that through cash, we do it online giving. Um, thank you for your partnership. Hey, let's lean into some worship. We've got a Christmas song. Let's do it. Thanks, Mandy and team. Thanks, Mandy.
Oh, you know. 
and she felt his, um, his last heartbeat. And um, they just, that last day even was just an amazing time of just me sharing faith with him, of remembering old youth group, faith commitments that he's made, of singing hymns together, um, of him you know, um, praying, feeling like he, he kind of made a confession. Um, just a gift, you know, a gift of time. And for me, it's just that testimony of, of no matter what's going on around us, God is faithful. God is faithful to his promises. And um, that was just such a um, just such a balm, I guess, for us just on that time. But um, And you know, everybody's story doesn't look the same, but God was faithful to the promises that he had made. I just you know, love it that he held that situation that he held um, Clive and Mark's mum in his hand. And the promises that he'd given, he watched over mm-hmm. and um, he brought mm-hmm. to pass. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just wanted to, to just give that testimony to God's faithfulness and to God's goodness. And that doesn't change. Right. No matter what's going on around us, it doesn't change. We can hang on to that because yeah. that's who he is. That's his heart towards us. Right, so Christmas. Red dress. <laughs> Christmas time, some sparkly things that I think we've just turned off. Oh, sparkly things. Thank you, Rebecca, for the Christmas right here for everybody. Awesome. So we've been um, we've been having um, messages. We kind of we had some series, you know, ready to go and, and things that we were looking forward to getting into. But we we put those on hold because we just felt that just with everything that was going on, we just needed to, to talk to the people of God and um, bring some things that just spoke to the situations that we found ourselves in. So we had some really um, great messages from Pastor Selwyn, from Wainati, and from Jamie, and from Pastor Mike. And um, I had a message kind of in the same vein. Hi, Anne. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's crying too. Did someone seem to get tissues, by the way, Facebook Live people? That's what that was about. Tissue break. Tissue break. Yeah, we should hand them out at the door. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I had a message kind of in that vein that I preached in um, in one meeting a couple of weeks ago, and um, was kind of you know geared up to, to do that here. And then I thought, oh, but I can't because it's Christmas. We're into our Christmas series today, and you know at Christmas time you have to get out the Christmas messages. Okay, Christmas time you open the the, the Christmas box and you do the Christmas things. Um, yeah, it's kind of that. It's kind of that. You know. Um, do real life, and then um, insert Christmas for however long that lasts in your house, maybe a month, maybe a week, maybe a day, and then we'll box Christmas up again and back to real life. Um, and then I started thinking, well, that's, that's a really weird way to treat Christmas, actually. It's kind of this artificial insert as this kind of break from real life as it is, this temporary moment um, in our year that we just kind of put in there and then just go back to life as it was. I don't know if you've ever heard that story about World War I and um, 1914 and the soldiers were in the trenches, like it was, it was pretty horrendous, like it was, it was horrible. And it was cold, it was freezing, um, rations were short, um, people were dying. Like it was, it was pretty horrible stuff. I can't even imagine what it was like being there. And um, they got to, to Christmas Day. And because it was Christmas Day, it was like they called this, this temporary kind of ceasefire, this truce for the day. And the soldiers came out of the trenches and they kind of got together in the middle in, in the no man's land. So you had, you know, you had the English and you had the um, French and you had the Germans. And um, they stopped fighting for Christmas Day and they came up and they, they um, played football together. Um, they sang Christmas carols together. They exchanged gifts. I think some of them exchanged like family photos. Um, they talked together. And... Um, had that beautiful Christmas. And it's, it's kind of a beautiful story, but it's, it's actually a bit tragic as well because they had this kind of temporary interruption for Christmas. And then the next day, it's everybody back in the trenches to start killing each other mm. again. 
You know, and I'm thinking, but is that the way that we perhaps treat Christmas sometimes? As kind of this temporary artificial insert um, into real life. And um, I felt challenged about what it is to share a Christmas message. Is it a Christmas message that we get out of the box and, you know, have at Christmas time? Or does it actually speak to our real lives, to our everyday lives? I mean, was that kind of temporary break? Was that the kind of peace that the angels were talking about? In Luke 2, where they said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. Is that the kind of peace they were talking about? A temporary ceasefire? I'm just going out on a limb, but I don't, I don't think that's what the angels were rejoicing over. A temporary break. And so I was um, looking at the, the prophecies in Isaiah, pointing towards the birth of Christ, and they're really beautiful, and we're probably quite familiar with them. And I thought, right, I need to, you know, have a look at the context. So that's Isaiah chapter 9. Go back to Isaiah chapter 8. And it was so interesting. You know, that we in Isaiah 8, we, we are kind of launched into this place where the, the, as a nation, they are they're under pressure. They're feeling under threat. And there is... Um, People are talking about um, conspiracies. What's going on here? There is there's fear. There is um, distress. People are feeling hopeless about the situation. There's, there's anger rising up. And into that situation, that situation that feels pretty, pretty accurate for how life can feel at the moment, comes these amazing promises about what it is that we think about at Christmas time. And Isaiah says this, he says this into that situation. He says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Verse 6, for unto us a child is born, for to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Now Christmas wasn't something that was pointed to as um, a part or distinct from the challenges and life as people encounter it. The promise of Christ coming was injected straight in to the pressures to the situations, to everyday life as we encounter it, as something that was to speak into that situation, that was something to bring hope and to bring light and to bring the promise of change and of transformation and of peace. That was the promise. So as they were in that time, in that situation, the prophet saying, look, look forward, look forward, it's coming. This is coming. And us today, we're now on the other side of at least some of the prophetic words coming true. We are those who who now look back on that child that came, that was born, Emmanuel, God with us, Prince of Peace. We are those who have been invited into that new kingdom. We are those that have passed from death to life, from darkness to light. We are those that now look back. So I want to talk this morning from from a book in the New Testament that is written to a church community that is in distress, that is in a a difficult and a problematic situation. And you know what the writer of this book tells them is that um, hold fast to that. Back in Isaiah, they were told to hold fast to the promise that it was coming. We now are told in our situations, in our lives, to hold fast to that which has come, to that which we have tasted of, to that which we are now part of. So let's jump in to the book of Jude and have a look and see what is going on for these people. 
Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Beloved, while eagerly preparing to write to you about the situa situation, the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write an appeal to you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. So he's saying to them, remember, remember what you've become part of. Remember the faith that you now belong to. And something has happened that you're going to, you need to contend for that. You're going to have to fight for that. You're going to have to hold on to that and wrestle for that, to keep hold, to keep um, to keep that as it should be in your lives. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. You know, the interesting thing with um, that passage there. He, wasn't, he didn't feel like he had to change tack and say, this is urgent, guys. We've got a situation here. When it was about pressure coming on the church from outside. Because that, that, was, that was everyday life for the New Testament church. They were used to pressure coming on from the outside. And the situation of pressure from the outside, he was going to be happily writing to them a message about the salvation that they share. He was looking forward to it. It was going to be a, you know, it's going to be a cool Christmas card message. But he says, actually, there's something going on here, guys. I'm going to. This is urgent. This is this is serious. Like we we have a situation, and I'm going to have to change tack, and I'm going to have to say, guys, we're going to have to contend for the faith. And the reason is because this was not stuff that was happening around about and outside, but this was something that was managing to to reach in to the church itself, to cause issue, to cause, it says later on, that, that these, these people are causing division. And Jude says, guys, we've, we've got to fight. We've got to fight for something here. We've got to fight for that promise that we've received, that, that light that we've walked into. We have to fight for it. We have to contend for it. Another interesting thing with that bit that we've just read, you know, it says that these people have, have secretly slipped in among you and are denying, let's get the wording right, they're denying Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Mm -hmm. Now these people, that we find out later on, they're actually having a bit of influence. There are voices that have come in that are having influence, but they're not, they're not standing up and saying, actually, Jesus Christ isn't the way. They're not standing on the pulpit and saying, um, Jesus Christ isn't actually the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way that you can secretly do that in the church. Okay, If I stood up here this morning and um, started saying things like that, um, Pastor Mike, as previous leader, would be up here like, like a shot. He'll be saying to sound guys like, cut the microphone. <laughs> Could we have the worship band, please? Does anybody have a testimony? <laughs> um, my influence would be finished, would be done. And that's not what these people are doing. They're not standing up and saying, Jesus Christ isn't Lord. They're actually part of the fellowship. They're saying, no, we're in but with their lives they were denying the Lordship of Christ. Professing Christ as Lord, but living in a way that denies his Lordship. That's challenging. That's really challenging for all of us, actually, to take stock and to think about that. So what else do we know about these people that were causing division, that were coming in, that were causing those really serious things that Jude feels he needs to address? They, um, verses 5 to 19, Jude gives us a really, um, one of the commentaries says, um, kind of colourful and vigorous. Just 
description of these people and, and what they're doing. And he, he goes to um, Old Testament, he goes to some writings that they were familiar with at the time, and he draws from those and he kind of draws these um, comparisons and these examples. And it's pretty strong, and if you want to go, you can go away and um, read that in your own time. That's a fun time. <laughs> Some interesting things in there. Um, but what he compares them to, he says that they're, they're, they're grumblers and they're malcontents. They're, they're causing division through, through that grumbling and, and discontent. Um, they reject authority. They're um, bombastic in speech. I had to look that up in the dictionary. It's not a word I use a lot. <laughs> I don't say, Clive, that was so bombastic. <laughs> Never. Um, yeah. So, you know, lots of words. Lots to say. Um, what else? They're um, greedy, looking out for themselves, flattering people to, to get what they want. So a whole lot of descriptions there. Wandering stars. They're wandering stars. Well, that's an unusual description. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you think about it, stars in, in the world at that time, stars were the things that were used for navigation. Stars were the things that you used to kind of find your way, to know where you're at, to know which direction to go in. He's saying these people are, they're wandering stars because people are following them, but they're leading people astray. People are trying, are navigating by them, and, but they're getting, they're getting lost through following you know, um, voices. You know, there's so many voices that we can tune into today. And we don't even, people don't even have to come and be part of our fellowship physically now to be a voice that can speak in to our church, that can bring sometimes healthy messages, sometimes not healthy messages, that can bring things that, that can cause um, division and discontent and grumbling and rejection of authority. And um, we need to be we need to be on our guard. We need to be aware. We need to contend for the faith that we've been given. The other description that um, Jude gives them is that he calls them dreamers. And that's a really interesting word to use. You know, we think of um, oh, you're dreaming, like you know, like something that's unrealistic. Mm. Like no, that's not going to happen. But in, in the Bible, the word um, dreamer is used for those who, who claim um, supernatural revelation about something. And dreamers had actually come to mean those who claim that falsely. Okay, if you want to, Bible scholars, if you want to look that up, Jeremiah 23 and Deuteronomy 13 to get that sense of the word dreamers. He's saying these people, these voices, that they're saying that they've got revelation from God, but they're the fruit, their lives are denying the lordship of Christ, their ways of living. So how is it that Jude tells these believers to contend? What is it that they're contending for? Let's jump to um, verse 17. He draws a contrast. He says, but you, beloved, a contrast between those who are not living faithful to the gospel, to those that are of the church that are living faithful to the gospel, that are wanting to contend for the faith, to hold on to what it is that, that they're looking back, that life that Christ has invited them into. And he says, if I can find it, but you, beloved, you must remember the message of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the things that Jesus said. And the things that Jesus did is passed down to you by the apostles, by those that were there, that witnessed it, that saw it. And that is what has become for us the New Testament. Mm. So these are the things that have been written down and recorded for us. And he's saying to them, guys, as contenders for the faith, you are those who are, you are a scriptural people. Mm. You are those who take voices and you hold them up against the revealed Word of God in Scripture, whether it's something that sounds really spiritual or not. That's our filter. That's our measuring stick. It's got to line up with that. You know, I remember a, a prophetic word a few years ago that um, had kind of come through the church and had gained a bit of traction, not, not specifically our church here, but the body worldwide. And, um, well, not worldwide. 
I'm not really down the road. I don't know. Back here. <laughs> at least one. Tamaru, at least go Tamaru. Okay. <laughs> um, I saw it on a few fridges. You know, it, it was it was getting some traction. But it was this word that said, um, you know, there's this move of the spirit coming. And you know, you need to be alert for it. You need to be watching for it. You need to get on board with this move of the spirit that is coming. Because if, if you don't, you're going to miss out on the next wave of the Spirit. If you don't, <laughs> thank you, Brenda. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to be excluded the next time that mm. God moves. Mm. And you know the, the biblical theological hair on the back of my neck <laughs> was standing up. I'm like, that's not the God I know. Mm. That's right. revealed in Scripture. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's not compatible with the prophecy in Joel that says, in the last days, I'll pour my spirit out yeah, yeah, on all flesh. Yes, yes, your sons, your daughters, your men servants, your maid servants. Mm. This is the Holy Spirit that equalizes mm. people, that is available for all. Mm. Jesus stood up in John. You know, he said, all you who are thirsty, mm. come to me and drink, and rivers of living water will spring up mm. from within you and will flow out from you. And John tells us that was referring to the Holy Spirit mm. that was going to come. All you who are thirsty, mm. come, come to me. In Acts, you know, we see um, even, even the believers are surprised at God's generosity with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's like, you're giving the Holy Spirit to them. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that, probably. Those people whose hearts are towards you, wow. Okay. All right, you're really generous with the Holy Spirit, God. That's the God that is revealed to us. You know, when we hear these voices, we need to hold them up mm. to Scripture. We need to say, is this in line with who we know that you are? And we've got to we contend. We contend with the bit of faith that's poured out to us. What else can we say about that faith? That faith that we're contending for. I just want to quickly zip back to just at the start of Jude. Because his starting and, and showing them how to contend for the faith, the first thing he does is to remind them of actually who they are. Who this faith makes them to be. And he says, just let me remind you who you are. He says, you are those who are called. Yeah, come on. You are called as a people. This is not individual yeah. calling, gifting, yeah. talent. Yeah, you, are called, you are a chosen people. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his light. That's the faith that we're contending for. He says that you're beloved by God the Father. You are loved. You are loved. That is what we know from our faith. That God has poured his love out on us. How great is the love of God that he's lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. You know what that means? That means that we're a family. We're united in our sonship and our daughtership. We, we are Fano. We can't ditch each other. That is the faith that we're contending for. It tells us that we are kept. We are kept. Like we, we are not in a precarious position. When it comes to God, it says you're kept safe for Jesus Christ. That's that looking forward to that completion of that promise that started way back in Jesus. That's the completion of that kingdom that we're called to be a sign and a symbol of. A prophetic sign and symbol of that kingdom of light that we're called into. We are kept. God keeps us. Remember baptism? That you've now died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. And when he appears, you will appear with him. We are kept. Our, our position in God's redemptive purposes for our world is secure. And nothing can come and kind of sneakily whip that out from under your feet. That's not the gospel. The gospel that we contend for is that we are kept. We are held, no matter what life throws at us. We are safe, we are secure. God has got us. There will be difficult times, there will be challenging times. But our salvation is not under threat. We 
are kept. Mm. We are kept. He says, may you be filled to abundance with mercy, peace, and love. Filled to abundance. That means that not just I have heaps, but that God has poured those things out into my life that I may then be a minister of those things in our, in our world. Yeah. Of mercy, of God reaching in to our situation when we couldn't help ourselves. That's what he's done for us. That's what we're called to be in our world that's contending for the faith. And I heard a beautiful example of mercy recently. Um, it was a discussion between um, somebody who was um, vaccinated and somebody who was unvaccinated within, within the body. And um, the person who was not vaccinated was worried that they were going to lose access to be able to buy food and to have groceries. And the person that was vaccinated simply said to them, well, I'm vaccinated and I'll buy your groceries for you. That's mercy. That's taking from what I have to give and to help somebody else. That's the faith that we contend for. Peace. God has abundantly poured peace out to us. That's not just peace and quiet. Peace and quiet is great and I love it. Holidays, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Peace and quiet and birds singing. That's pretty much I'm happy. But it's not that, it's not just that. It's not just even an absence of, of worry. It's not even that kind of peace, which God also promises us. But peace, it's that wider sense of shalom, of reconciliation with God, with each other, with ourselves, with our environment. He's poured reconciliation into our lives. And now he's given us a ministry of reconciliation. That's the faith that we're to contend for. That's who we are as his people. This is the Jesus that when he came as that baby, united wise men who were men of education and wealth and influence who could walk in and talk to kings and shepherds who sleep out in the field at night without any of those things and united those groups of people in in worship to the Saviour. This is the Jesus that took um, Matthew, the tax collector, who worked for the Roman government, and Simon the Zealot, who said we should be having an uprising, a violent uprising is fine, to get rid of him. And he, he pulls those two people together, and he says, follow me. Come. Follow me. Those things are not the that will either divide or unite you any longer. I'm calling you into another kingdom. A kingdom that's not of this world, that is beyond any of that. And he unites them. He brings reconciliation. That's the faith that we contend for. This is the God that united Jews and Gentiles, those who were divided ethnically and racially. He says, I'm making one new family out of two groups of people. Once you were not a people, but now you are. Book of Ephesians tells us all about it. That's the faith that we contend for. That is what Christmas came to speak into, into our everyday lives. And we need to contend. We need to contend for it. We need to wrestle for it. We need to be those that build each other up, that build together, not divide. That pray together in the spirit. That keep ourselves in the love of Christ as we wait for the return, for the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, for which we are kept. Let's contend for Christmas.
Pastor Dawn, what an incredible word. I've heard it twice today, and it's still working in me. In my head, can we just give everyone a hand who served um, our church twice? Like our worship team and hospitality team, just to make it. In trying times, we've made some choices that we think are driven by love. We see we're going to take the hard road so we can serve as many people as we can. And uh, just, just spend a little bit more energy on a Sunday to make sure that we can grab these spaces together for all of us to come together and be together and celebrate who God is. Next week's our last week together uh, for the year. Really encourage you register yourselves and your family um, for either our 9:30 or our 11:15 services because kids will be included in these numbers. So we've got a bit of margin left in this service, um, but our early one was relatively full. So get in quick, and uh, it'll be great to be celebrating uh, all together next week. Man, do that. I just my mind keeps coming back. What an incredible word for us in this season and. Um, he talked about the generosity of the Holy Spirit yes. uh, and just uh, um, with Peter, the giving of the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. And my mind just keeps tracking that back to well, um, Peter being the New Testament Jonah and the word coming to to um, Saul, son of, oh, sorry, to, to Simon, son of Jonah in Joppa. New, a New Testament Jonah, same situation except Jonah's heart is not softened by the Spirit. So he takes what he has and he wants to withhold it. But Simon, filled with the Spirit, after having a vision, a dream, has a changed mindset and genuinely offers what he has to those who are different to him. And that's my prayer. This keeps playing over as you speak, spoke it this morning. It's my prayer for us as a church that we would be the Spirit version, the Spirit change, the Spirit transformed version as a church, not those ones who withhold what we have close and withhold uh, what we God's given us so freely not share it with others. May we be more like Simon Peter than we were like Jonah. May we be more New Testament than we are Old Testament. This morning, hey, God bless you. If you'd like prayer for anything, we'd love to pray with you. But otherwise, have a great week. And um, I just encourage you to think about those food hampers. And if you haven't got your email address, please check them out. Information desk as well. Otherwise, God bless you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we look forward to celebrating with you next Sunday. Thank you.